Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. I'm going to be showing you the quilt top that I made out of the lemon star pattern. It's made primarily out of half square triangles and is pretty easy. This is the fabric that I got to use for the back. It has cute little white daisies on it as a pattern. And this is the fabric that I got to use for the binding and perhaps a border on the front. And I've made some of the blocks out of it. I chose white fabric with white dots to be the background fabric. So right now I am cutting that background fabric into five and a half inch squares. I need two white five and a half inch squares and four three and a half inch squares for each block. I'm also cutting two different yellow fabrics into five and a half inch squares. And I'll need two squares of each yellow fabric for each block that I'm making. You can stack your fabric as you cut it to minimize your cutting time. So now I'm stacking the fabric as to how I am going to sew it. I take two squares of the yellow fabrics and place them together right sides facing. Then I take a yellow square and a white square and place them right sides facing. Last comes the flower print and a white square and I place those together right sides facing. Right now I am just making one block just so I can see how to do it and if I know what I'm doing. I'm using white thread to sew the blocks together. I take the square sets to the sewing machine and with a quarter inch seam, I sew all the way around the squares. Right here, it's bunching up because the thread got caught in the presser foot. But once I pull it out and smooth it over, everything's fine. I just resume sewing after I tack it down. And I'm a little embarrassed at how long it took me to figure out what was making the fabric bunch, but I decided not to edit that out and just to leave it in. Are you impressed with how fast I can sew? I sped up the video. Then I also do the other two sets the same way. Once you've sewn the squares together, get ready for some magic to happen. I put my straight edge from corner to corner diagonally and cut a straight line. Then I turn the pieces around trying not to disturb them and make another cut from corner to corner. That leaves you with four half square triangles. And with all three sets cut and opened, you have 12 half square triangles. 
So I open them up and finger press them so they'll stay a little flat. Ideally, you should have the seam allowance um, underneath on the dark side, but I don't always do that. I will show you how to square them up a little further on in the video. So now I lay them out into my pattern. You're basically making a windmill and then adding on to it. You'll use the four three and a half inch squares that I talked about earlier in the corners. Here is my first finished block and I'll show you how I made the rest of them. A total of 12 blocks. I squared up this first block by lining up my straight edge with a quarter inch seam allowance from the tips of the stars to the edge of the fabric. And then I just trimmed off the excess with my rotary cutter. The finished quilt block is 12 and a quarter inches square. After sewing and cutting a bunch of squares, I now have the stack of half square triangles that don't measure up to three and a half inches. I'll find something to do with them, but as a result, I decided instead of making the squares five and a half inches, that I would make them six inches so that I would have less waste. And so to square up a half square triangle, it really is easiest if you use a measure or a ruler like this one. I measure three and a half inches with the diagonal line on the seam and then trim it. Then I turn it around and do the exact same thing and trim the other side. Here are the pieces laid out for three more blocks to be sewn together. I started with the top two middle pieces for this block, but I got them turned around or switched around somehow, so you'll notice in um, a little bit later that I had to pick out the seams and re-sew it. I'm changing the direction of one of the seam allowances so that the seams will fit together nicely. You may have noticed that I have a different background fabric than what I started out with and that's because I ran out of um, the white material and couldn't find the same material and I'm okay with it you may not like it but I'm okay with it I got the pattern for this block by watching a tutorial that Jenny Doan did from the Missouri Star Quilt Company she called it the giant star block I think and it was twice as big as this one so I'll leave the link for that in the description box.
And this is how it's supposed to look. So now onto the squares of the second row of this block. I matched these two up together perfectly and then turned it unbeknownst to myself and sewed it on a different edge. But luckily it the blocks were the same and so it ended up working in the spot that I needed it to. And I think the theme of this video is to nest your seams and match them up well. And by making sure that your seam allowances are going in different directions, it not only makes it easier for the fabric for the seams to nest up together, but when you sew, you'll only be sewing through four pieces of fabric instead of six. You'll notice here that at the end of the seam that the fabric moved and it made the seam veer off. And I was unhappy with that, with how it would make the blocks look. And so I just redid it just a couple of inches, just tacked it down and it was able to go a little straighter. I went ahead and sewed all of the squares into rows. And now I'm sewing all of the rows together. To sew the rows together, I need to nest the seams together. And that works best if I have seam allowances going in the opposite directions. I butt the seams up just as snug to each other as I can and then secure it with a pin and sew it. I never did tell you why I was making this quilt. I have a dear friend who's had a really hard year and I wanted to make a quilt for her that was cheery and that she could um, look at and feel happy and feel that she was cared for. I think the quilts are such a good way to show people that you love them. There's a lady that I knew who lived in the same church congregation that I do, who recently passed away. And she would make quilts whenever somebody was sick or having health problems, she would make a quilt and have it de delivered to the hospital by someone or deliver it herself anonymously and leave it on the doorstep. She did this for years and eventually people figured out who was doing it. And she must have made hundreds of quilts Sometimes you have to give it a good pull to get that needle going again. Anyway, back to my story. Her act of kindness is a great legacy to her, and I'm sure that her children are very proud. And here it is. It's not perfect but it's close enough. I laid out all of the blocks that I had finished onto my bed so I could see what needed to be done. 
I also like to take a picture of it on my phone at this point for future reference. I need to make one more block and I also need to do the sashing and then the little detail in the corners and the, the square in the sashing. I went ahead and made another block. And now I'm making one and a half inch squares out of yellow fabric. These will go on the corners of the white squares. I fold one into half on the diagonal line and the fold will act as a sewing guide. You could also mark it with a pencil or with invisible ink pen. Or if you're really good, you can just eyeball it. So I place the square in the corner of the white square and I can sew on the line that I made by the fold, which will allow me to fold it back over and have a triangle. Then I went ahead and did that to every one of the white squares. After it's sewed on, I take it to the cutting mat and pull the top piece back and cut the bottom two pieces off. Give them a good trim. I'm showing you here how I ironed the seam allowances in alternating ways. So I did all that to the left and then the next one to the right and so on. I gave all of the blocks a trim, doing it the same way I did the very first one, leaving a quarter inch between the edge and the star points. I made the sashing strips by cutting the background fabric into one and a half inch strips. I then sewed the one and a half inch squares onto the ends. I sewed plain sashing strips to the sides of the blocks, or I should say on the right sides of the blocks. Then I take the sashing strip that has the one and a half inch square on it and I nest that seam with the seam of the sashing strip on the side 
and sew those both together. Then I end up with this, and it's just about as perfect as can be, in my opinion. I trim off the bottom piece of sashing with the rotary cutter, and then go ahead and do the rest of the blocks with sashing. This is how the pieces look laid out on a bed, so that you can see how they're supposed to look when they're sewn together. I did not think this through fully, and so the left side and the top of the quilt do not have sashing. So I can either remove the right side of the sashing and the bottom, or I can add sashing to the left side and the top, and that's what I decide to do. I turned some of the blocks around so that you could see an alternate detail in the corners or that the corners would make if you wanted to do it differently. Now I'm adding the sashing pieces to the side and the top of the corner block. Matching up the square with the bottom sashing piece to this block and then sewing them together. On one of these sashing pieces, and I don't remember which one now, but I sewed it, I sewed the wrong side to the front of the block. And I was too lazy to take it out and redo it. And it was really hard to tell anyway, I thought. And as long as I'm confessing my mistakes, I'll just tell you that there were some of the um, pieces of yellow fabric that I sewed the wrong side onto the front by mistake, and I just left them. So you may think that that's horrible, and you may think that that's okay, but, um, you know, we all just do things differently. At this point, I'm being very lazy, and I didn't want to get up and take this piece over to the cutting mat, and so I'm going to just cut it with the scissors. So I'm just going to fold the strip over the scissor blade and just cut it this way, but you need to be very careful when you do this. And I really don't recommend you do it if you're new to sewing. As you could see, there was a slight slant on it, and you just need to be careful that it doesn't um, mess up your, your quilt by cutting it at an angle. 
I'm sewing the sashing on the top part of this corner block now. And what I didn't realize was that on the corner quilt block that I would need three one and a half inch squares, one for the bottom corner, one for the top corner, and then one for um, the top corner that would join with the next block. And so as you see, I sewed it all the way to the end without a one and a half inch square on it. And so I end up picking out some of the stitching and trimming the sashing piece and sewing one of the squares onto it. And I had to do it a couple of times to get it right. You'll notice that I didn't get it perfect, but I was able to nest the seams and ease it together so that it worked out just fine. <laughs> 
voila. And I think that looks pretty good. With the left side and top sashing completed, I am now ready to sew the blocks into rows. And when I sew blocks together, I like to match up the top and the bottoms first and then match up the seams. So I have the bottom of the block and I'm matching up the sashing seam with the one and a half inch square seam and I am pinning it together after I nested it snugly together. I then put a pin about two to three inches away from that pin and then went to the top of the block. You can see that if I smooth the block out completely, that it leaves a half, well, probably more than a half of an inch overlap at the top of the block. So if I match up the top edges together and pin them, then I can gently ease or stretch the other pieces so that they will match up. And then I will pin the pieces together every three or four inches or so. See how the piece of fabric closest to the camera looks bigger than the one behind it? The pieces just need to be gently stretched or eased together so that there's no puckering when it's sewn. You can see I'm holding it taut as I'm stitching it. The bottom sashing has a slight slant to it, so I'm careful to keep the stitching going straight and not um, with the fabric, just in this spot. When I completed sewing the blocks into rows, then I um, took it to the iron, took them to the ironing board, and gave everything a good steam press. Don't mind Lucy; she's just looking for food in the laundry room. When I ironed the back, I needed to make sure that the seams were going in opposite directions from. Um, for the alternating rows so that the seams of the the sashing seams would nest together
when I sewed the rows together. So now it's time to sew the rows together. When I'm sewing rows or columns together, I go ahead and I match up the seams first so that the junctures will um, be clean and crisp. Once I nest the seams and then pin them into place, then I can go to uh, the parts in between the seams and pin them every three or four inches, making sure that I can ease that material together. You'll notice that um, in some spots I have more material on one, p on one side than I do the other. But usually if you just stretch it gently, it will ease together and it will be fine once you sew it together. When I first started piecing quilts together, I thought that as long as I me measured carefully and cut exactly, that everything would just line up automatically, that I could start sewing from the top and go to the bottom and everything would just magically be um, in perfect alignment. Maybe in a perfect world, but not in real life. Um, you've been noticing that when I uh, go to put my my tops together, the top or the bottom together, that there will be about a half an inch and sometimes even an inch more um, on one side. So you really do need to take the time and pin these seams together first and then pin the rest of your loose fabric. And now to sew it together. And then I go ahead and do the rest to the remaining rows. <laughs> 
and I have a horrible mess of threads at the very bottom that I'll need to trim off. Here is the finished quilt top. It measures 40 and a quarter inches by 53 and a quarter inches. I am going to add a couple of borders to it, which will make it larger. And of course, it still needs the three B's, backing, batting, and binding. But I'm going to have to do another video to um, finish off the quilt and when that's done I will link it I will put the link in the description box of this video so thank you for joining me in making this quilt top of the lemon star pattern and be sure to look for part two coming soon I hope goodbye and happy quilting.